And now we can officially move on to magnification. Now, what is magnification? For all you biologists, definitely just remember this definition. It could get you marks. Magnification is the size of an image divided by the size of an actual object. So basically, in simple terms or simple language, it's basically the zoom. How zoomed is the object? So that's simple language. Don't write that in your, in your exam. You have to write this line, this line over here. The size of an image divided by the size of an actual object. Or in other words, if that doesn't make sense, the number of times larger an image is than the real size of an object. So just take a moment, just take this definition in, and I'll explain to you better with a formula because words are more confusing. So now let's take a look at the formula, which I feel is a lot easier to explain. Um, this is basically the formula triangle, which I recommend remembering. How I remembered is MIA, so the name M-I-A, MIA. M stands for magnification. I stands for image size, so the size of the photograph or the electron micrograph. And A is the actual size. And since we're dealing with cells, always remember that your actual size should be small. So if you get something like, I don't know, a thousand millimeters for a cell, you've definitely gone wrong somewhere. And actual size Usually when they give it to you on a piece of paper, it'll be in millimeters. You'll usually measure it in millimeters. And I think that it's better if I carry on with the example. So let's check that out. So measuring cells. First off, I cannot stress enough, you have to remember to convert to the same units. It makes life so much easier. Now. In the first case scenario, you are either told two of the three things. So for example, if you are told that the image is magnified by a hundred times and the image is 50 millimeters, right? So the image is 50 millimeters. So you have M, you have I, and you do simple basic maths to get A, which is the actual size. And the actual size is 0 0.5 millimeters which makes sense because it's a lot smaller than the image because the magnification is a hundred times larger if you're getting a number in the same unit which is larger than your image size but it says it's magnified you know you have gone wrong somewhere so double check your answer all right so we're gonna move on and also before we move on you can be given any two so in this case you were given these two next time you could be given the actual size of an object and the image or the actual size of an object and the magnification and you're asked to find out the image. So it's just simple mathematics and you just cover up the triangle and rearrange a simple equation to get whatever you need. All right, so now we're gonna check out the second scenario. So in the second scenario, which I find is particularly, I guess, harder to grasp, but it's still simple, don't worry. They give you scale bars. Now, if you've never seen a scale bar, it's pretty much a line which is scaled up and they give you how much that line actually stands for, right? So here's how you approach a scale bar situation. You take your ruler. First thing you do, if you see a scale bar situation, you take out your ruler and you measure in millimeters. Now, in this case, we're going to pretend this thing is 3.6 centimeters long. So it's 36 millimeters, right? So in this case, 36 millimeters represents 6 micrometers. And the next thing you do, you convert millimeters to micrometers because the unit they have given you is in micrometers. So why not make it simple, right? So 36 into 1,000. If you don't remember on the previous slide, how do we convert from millimeters to micrometers? You times it by 1,000. So you get 36,000. And then to find out the magnification, you simply do 36,000 micrometers over six micrometers and you get the magnification of 6,000. Now, why is it 36 over six? It's the image over the actual, right? So the actual, just remember the actual is the number which they give you and the image is the number which you measured and converted, right? Now this thing, or you could also do it this way, which is length of the scale bar divided by length that the scale bar represents. 
right? So the length of the scale bar here is 36 millimeters, aka 36 micrometers, 36, sorry, 36,000 micrometers over the length that the scale bar represents, which is 6 micrometers. So you do the math and you should still get into 6,000 magnification. And if you get a fraction of a magnification, I think that you have gone wrong somewhere because usually magnification is to make images bigger, not smaller. So you might want to recheck your math. But just basically remember this green part or just remember that whatever number you measure, take it over the number which they give you. So that's how you approach a scale bar situation. And now another situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next situation we have, guys, is using an eyepiece graticule and a stage micrometer. Now, an eyepiece graticule is basically a bar, which you will see on the next slide. Actually, you know what? I'll show you right now. <laughs> um, here we go. This diagram shows a stage micrometer with divisions 0.1 millimeters apart viewed through an eyepiece containing a graticule. So we're looking, this is the microscope, and we're looking through. And here is the stage micrometer. Now the stage micrometer is basically what you use to calibrate these numbers because these numbers don't have units. So you usually have a cell or something here, you place it here. So for example, my cell width goes from 10 to 50, right? So my units, my arbitrary units are 40. And 10 and 50, so 40 arbitrary units line up with one division on the stage micrometer. And one division on the stage micrometer is equal to 0.1 millimeters apart. Let's go back to the previous slide. Oh, my bad. Oh no. <laughs> the divisions on a stage micrometer are usually 0.1 millimeters or 0.01 millimeters. So it's just a simple case of lining, lining it up. So you know that the space in between here is 0.1 millimeter. And you know that, you know, these units, they have no numbers. So for example, if your image goes from 20, I'm sorry, 10 to 50, you know that that's 0 0.1 millimeters. So it's just a case of simple ratio. And now guys, earlier I mentioned something about resolution, right? So let's take a look at what resolution is. Now, resolution, to put it simply, is the ability to distinguish between two separate points. Now, magnification is unlimited. You can magnify to an image as much as you want, but it becomes pointless when you can't distinguish between two points, and the two points just appear as one. If two points cannot be resolved, they will be seen as one point. So no matter how much you magnify it, you'll just see one point. You cannot see further details. So the whole point of resolution is for detail. So the greater the resolution, the greater the detail. And which is why I told you earlier, electron microscopes, the main advantage they have over light microscopes is the detail. And let's see how that works in the next slide. This is an electromagnetic spectrum. For those of you who do physics, this should be familiar with you. And we are looking at the visible light region because we're talking about light microscopes at the moment. You can see that the wavelength of light goes from visible light goes from 400 nanometers to around 700 nanometers right that is the wavelength of light of visible light which the light microscope uses so visible light it goes from 400 nanometers as we saw to 700 nanometers now if for example you have a mitochondrion which has a diameter of a thousand nanometers which, for example, this is the mitochondrion. This has a diameter of a thousand. Let's just pretend that's a circle, okay? It has a diameter of a thousand nanometers, right? Which means it can interfere with the wavelength because this number is bigger than these two numbers. It's bigger than 700. So therefore, you see the wavelength, it interferes because it's basically, it's too big. So therefore, you can see it and you can distinguish between mitochondrions because they're big and fat and it basically it doesn't fit in between these gaps. Whereas, for example, ribosomes, which have a smaller diameter, which, for example, let's say 25 nanometers, 
it cannot interfere with the wavelength because it just fits in the gap, right? So basically it squeezes in the gap so it's undetected. So therefore it cannot be seen. And let me tell you about the rules. The general rule is that the limit of resolution is one half of the wavelength of the radiation used to view the specimen. So what that means is that microscopes using visible light, so for example, the lowest wavelength of visible light as we saw earlier is 400 nanometers. So for light microscopes, divide that by half, one half of the wavelengths, which is 200. So therefore, the maximum resolution for a light microscope is 200 nanometers. But however, the electron microscope, the wavelength is so much smaller. Therefore, you can see in so much more detail. Oh, another thing about light microscopes, transparent objects, they need to be stained. If not, the light will just travel through and you cannot see anything. So do keep that in mind as well. And now we move on. Electron microscopes, as I said earlier, use free electron beams, which behave like electromagnetic radiation, right? Now, the electromagnetic radiation of the electron beam, let's just say it pretends like a wave, right? Like the waves we saw earlier in the electromagnetic spectrum. However, the electron beam, compared to light, has a much shorter wavelength and therefore a lot more energy. So therefore, if it has a much shorter wavelength, if we go back, just imagine the gaps between these lines would be so much smaller Therefore, it could detect something like the ribosome with 25 nanometers, right? Whereas in, if it's light, you cannot detect it. But if it was an electron, the gaps between these lines would be so much smaller. Therefore, you could definitely detect the ribosomes. So I'm sorry for, if I keep going back and forth and it makes you dizzy. <laughs> and so what you need to remember here is that electron microscopes are suitable, electron beams, in particular are suitable because they have a short wavelength and because ne they're negatively charged. And why is being negatively charged, why does it make it suitable? It makes it suitable because you can focus the electron beams easily using the electromagnets and therefore you can alter the path easily, right? So another interesting fact the electron microscope has a resolution up to 400 times better than a light microscope and the resolution can go up to 0 0.5 nanometers. So that's the end of the first chapter guys. I, I tried my best um, and thank you for watching and make sure you check out the other videos of Simple Science. Thank you so much guys. Bye!